Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my brother-in-law's 07 Mustang GT500. It's got a 5.4 liter V8 motor. And today I'm gonna to be replacing the power steering pump. So there isn't a lot of room to work in this engine bay because of all the hoses and other things inside it. So hopefully I'll be able to show you some tips and tricks to get this done a little easier and a little quicker with as little mess as possible. So I've already got the car up off the ground because I was working on some other parts to this car because I'm going to need to crawl underneath a couple times in order to service this pump, more specifically to remove the belt. So the first thing you need to do is, is take the air box out, which would be here. This car has got an aftermarket intake, which is held on by that single bolt and then pressed into these two slots right here, locator pins. So I can't speak to how you remove the stock intake. Either way, you need to remove it in order for you to get access to the belt tensioner. The belt tensioner is right there, the little grayish spot. That's the end of the bolt that you need to grab onto in order to move the adjuster to slacken the belt so you can remove it. As you can see, there's not very much room down in here, so it's a little bit hard to film. So that's pretty much the best shot of that adjuster bolt I can get. So as you can see, there's not very much room to get a wrench in there and pull the belt out. But there is a tool you can rent from your local auto parts store. It's a serpentine belt tool kit. It comes with a really thin bar and some sockets and a couple crow's feet and a quarter inch extension. This plus the 15 millimeter socket barely fit in the area that we need to get into in order to relieve the tension on the bolt without having to undo a whole bunch of other stuff and move them aside to get clearance. So to give yourself a little bit more clearance, it's a good idea to remove the power steering pump reservoir from its bracket so that you can move it around a little bit and get some more clearance. Okay, now you just lift straight up and now the power steering pump reservoir is free. Now we can take our serpentine belt tool with the 15 millimeter socket, then press down on the tool to relieve the tension on the belt and then remove the belt from the power steering pump pulley. And because we moved the power steering pump reservoir out of the way, we now have room to fully disengage the tool. Otherwise we'd be hitting this reservoir and wouldn't be able to get it out. So now that you have the belt out of the way, it's a good idea to tuck it up out of the way or even better remove it because you don't want to get any fluid on it while you're removing the pump because there will be some, some spillage that you don't want to get onto your serpentine belt. So in my case, I'm going to remove the belt altogether. Now before you remove the belt, it's also a good idea to take note of its route because it's not an obvious route on this vehicle. And in addition, there's no sticker anywhere on the hood like on most vehicles giving the description of the route. So you kind of either have to remember, or draw it, or take a picture, or you can look at the picture that I'm going to include in this video. Okay, next we have to remove the pulley itself. To do so, you need to rent or purchase a power steering pump pulley installer remover kit. You can rent one from your local auto parts store. The part number is 27031. And it comes with all the stuff you need to remove the power steering pump pulley as well as to reinstall it when you're done. So for this job, this, this bit right here is what removes the pulley. It's made of five parts, two half-shaped moons, a retaining ring, and I'm not really sure what you'd call this, but you got a screw and you got a, a puller. So as I said before, it's a little tight in here, so it's a little hard for me to show you how to install this pulley remover. But the basic gist is you take this one of the half moons one of the two, and you take the larger edge like this, and it goes into this groove right here on the pulley. Then you take the driver, slip it into this part right here, take the other half moon, put it on top, like that. Then you slide this ring over top of it, like this, and then you turn this turn this screw and it'll pull the pulley off. Maybe a little bit hard to see, but I have the tool installed. Here's the shaft from the tool. Here's the retaining ring and here's the power steering pump pulley. So it's best to turn the inner nut and keep the center shaft stable. This is where a ratcheting box end wrench would shine. However, I don't have one of this size, so I'm stuck with the manual route. So it'll help to put a little bit of WD-40 on the threads. That'll let the nut spin on the center shaft a little bit easier. So 
Sorry if I'm blocking, but again, there's not a lot of room in here. This takes a lot of effort. Okay, and it just came off. Finally, I'm actually winded. So now you remove the tool. Remove the pulley without dropping your tool down into the bowels of the motor. And there's your prize. Well, at least the first half of your prize. So we unbolted the reservoir so it's loose. So we can also then tuck it down out of the way so that once we disconnect this hose, any fluid that's in the reservoir will remain in the reservoir. It also gives us better clearance to take off this clamp right here. So now we just take our clamp, and move it up out of the way, eventually. There. So now you want to take the hose and rotate it back and forth a little bit, like that to free it from the metal adapter that it's plugged into. Oftentimes rubber as it gets older will bond kind of to the metal that it's attached to. So by twisting it first before pulling on it, you free it from that bond and make removing it ultimately a lot easier. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the hose. So the pump comes with a little plug in the pump that I'm going to use and stick into the hose here to help prevent any excessive leaks. But no matter what I do, there's going to be a leak. So I'm going to place a rag underneath to catch as much of it as I can to avoid a ton of cleanup at the end. So here we go. Now I can remove the reservoir far out of the way. To avoid excess drips, take a plastic bag and cover up the end and seal it off, kind of, with a rubber band. Now we can remove our rag. So it's a little hard to see from the other angle, but right there, that's the high pressure line going into the pump. So we need to disconnect that. Chances are it's got a good amount of rust on it, so you're gonna wanna put some penetrating oil on it and let it sit for a little while before you try to take it off. So let the penetrating oil sit for a little while, and next you wanna take what's called a line wrench. It looks like one of these. It's different than a standard open end wrench in that it actually holds on to the hex head on at least five sides, greatly reducing the chance of rounding over the corners. If you strip this thing, you're gonna have to replace the entire line which is not an easy job. So take your line wrench, set it on, and try to break it loose. This thing's on pretty tight, so it's not giving me a lot of room to work with. It's also hard to do with one hand. Okay, I'm gonna... I wanna do this with two hands so I don't slip and strip this bolt. Okay, now I've got it loosened. Now you just go in with a regular, a regular wrench and Loosen it the rest of the way. If I used a wrench like this to loosen this nut, it would have stripped. This thing was on really tight. I had to use two hands to do it. So be careful when you uh, remove these lines. And if you can, invest in a set of line wrenches. They'll save your butt and pay for themselves pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna remove this line. Okay, sorry I wasn't able to get this on camera, but I needed to undo this bracket right here, which is bolted right here, in order to allow the high pressure line to become free. So you wanna undo this before you get to the point where this needs to come out. I put a plastic bag, again with another rubber band. Uh, not necessarily for leaks in this case, mostly to prevent contaminants from getting down in the line. So that little bit of red right there, that's the plug that came with the new power steering pump. So when I removed the high pressure line, I quickly installed that plug and tightened it up really snug to limit the amount of fluid that came out of the pump. A little bit did, as you can see, so you wanna have a rag underneath in order to catch it to prevent it from getting all over your pulleys and things like that. So now that the hoses are disconnected, you unbolt that bolt, that bolt, and then that bolt, and remove the power steering pump completely from the car. Pumps out. Now we take it over to the bench.
There's the old pulley and here's the new one. So as you can see, the new one doesn't come with this spout, so we need to transfer this over here. Another thing is that this pump actually contains clear power steering fluid. The system in this car takes ATF, so I want to try to drain out as much of this clear power steering fluid as I can before I install it to avoid contaminating the system as much as possible. To remove it, there are two T30 screws. and then you just pull straight out. So if you look closely, there are two O-rings, one here and one here. The new power steering pump comes with two replacements. One is smaller than the other. The small one goes in this little groove right here, and the bigger one goes on the bottom there. So use a pick or similar to remove the first O-ring. So now you want to clean this up, make sure there's no dirt or debris or rust like right there on the uh, mating surfaces and prep to reinstall the new O-rings. I like to coat them with a little bit of power steering fluid to make install easier. I also don't like installing O-rings dry. Uh, they tend not to seal as well that way. Anyway, so install the new O-ring. Goes in quite easy. Take the second O-ring and install that one just the same. So just snug these down. There is no torque spec, at least not the one that I could find. Just make sure that they're tightened down evenly. Okay, while we're prepping to install the new pump, it's a good idea to take the plug that we temporarily put on here back onto the new pump to avoid any fluid that may be in here draining out onto our motor. Don't forget to package up and send back your old pump for your core charge. Okay, now we're ready to install our pump. So just put a little dab of anti-seize on the end of the bolt, snake it into place, and start the threads by hand. Put anti-seize on the next bolt, and start that one by hand too. And lastly, put some anti-seize on the end of that. The last bolt, slide it into place, and start it by hand as well. Once you have them all started, then you can run them down by hand, or run them down the rest of the way. So now we have to remove the red plug and reinstall the high pressure line. Have a rag handy underneath in case it starts to leak. Take the plastic bag off your high pressure line. Okay, before we can install the high pressure line, we need to install a new Teflon washer around here. It goes right in here. Make sure to remove any remnants of the old one before trying to install the new one. So the way we do that is we take a coffee cup and stick the new O-ring in, uh, in some water and then heat up the water in, in the microwave for about a minute. Then let it sit for a little while. That'll soften up the O-ring so that we can stretch it over top the uh, end of the hose. In the meantime, you want to find something with a good taper to it to stretch the O-ring with. So I use this old three inch extension that has a nice gradual taper at the bottom. Use whatever you have handy. So you want to do this quickly. Take the O-ring and just continually stretch it. Making sure not to break it, of course. Until it's a reasonable size. Then quickly take it and try to put it on the can't tell if I'm getting that on camera, but at the moment I just want to get this in. And there you go, the O-ring's fully installed. You're going to have to work it in a little bit, so you put it on top, and then you just keep spinning it around in the corners. Just keep spinning it around, pressing down, and just roll it over each one of the teeth on that screw until it just works its way down. The key is to stretch the O-ring ahead of time far enough so that it doesn't collapse down on the screw. So now we remove the red plug. Making sure there's a rag underneath to, if, to catch any leaks. And then, sorry I'm going to have to block the camera, but just stick the high pressure line up and into the new pump. It's good to keep the pump loose so that you can install this easier. Okay, once you've got the thread started, then you can switch to using a wrench. Okay, once you've got it, and it tightened down, you want to snug it down really well. The torque uh, spec is about 46 foot-pounds, but since it's a line like that, unless you have a crow's foot, it'll be difficult to get an accurate torque on it. So just snug it down really well. Don't go gorilla all over it and strip out the threads, but you want to get it really tight. 
Next, secure the bracket that holds the high pressure line in place. Put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolt. Start it by hand. Okay, now that you got everything secured, it's time to tighten down the bolts on the pump. The torque spec is 18 foot-pounds, which is basically just snug it down. Next, we're going to reinstall the pulley. To aid in installation, it's a good idea to coat the inside of the pulley with a little bit of transmission fluid, as well as coat the shaft that it's going to go onto. So part of the install kit uses a stepped bolt like this. The threads down here are M8 by 1.25, and they match the threads inside the shaft of the pump. Now chances are you have a remanufactured pump, and they probably didn't put a thread chaser down the, the bore here. It might be a good idea to go out and rent a thread restore kit, part number 27142. In it, there's a tap that'll fit perfectly in there that you just wiggle it back and forth, just keep going until it bottoms out, which is about a good, I'd say, inch deep. You don't want to put this in only a couple threads and then have this thing just strip out as you're pulling because there's going to be a lot of force on this bolt. In my case, they didn't chase the uh, threads in the shaft, so I had to clear it out. Just squirt a little bit of WD-40 or penetrating oil in there to help break up the rust and clear out the threads. Now just put the pulley on, just get it started a little bit. Okay, so you thread the install tool into the shaft. and snug it down. Again, it should go in about a half inch to an inch. And then thread the plunger down. Now you wanna make sure that this is in straight. If your bolt is bent at all, this won't work. You're not gonna have the pulley pressed on correctly and you'll be working against yourself. So make sure this is in, aligned properly and in straight. Now take your wrenches. Again, this is where ratcheting wrenches shine. The key here is you want the plunger to spin because it's got a bearing in it and you want the pulley to remain stable. You don't want the pulley spinning around. If, that, if the pulley is spinning around that means the shaft is spinning which means you're not actually pressing the pulley on. And you should back it out and regroup. There. Once it bottoms out, you won't be able to move it anymore, you're done. Back out. And remove the tool. So you'll know when you're all the way on, when you can see the shaft is flush with the outer edge of the pulley, like this one is right here. Okay, so now take the reservoir that you set aside and get it in the general location. Remove the plug that you added earlier. Before tilting it back to normal, attach the hose and then rotate the reservoir up. Then attach the hose clamp. Now we need to prime the pump. First you need to fill up the reservoir with fresh fluid. This is a better and more reliable method, in my opinion, than installing the belt and bumping the motor to have the motor spin the pulley. Reason being is that just bumping the motor can cause this pulley to spin a couple hundred times and you lose all control in how much fluid gets sucked back into the system. You can easily run the reservoir dry by bumping it like that. If you bump it by hand with an Allen key, I mean the shaft was designed with that key in mind, rotating it manually by hand you can control the amount of fluid getting sucked out and prime the pump a lot faster. But before you install the belt, it's a good idea to go over the pulley with a clean rag and some brake clean to remove any oil that you may have gotten on the pulley as well as wiping down the other pulleys in the area. This will help prevent squeaks on first startup and help prevent your belt from slipping. You can use this image as a reference for how the routing should be. The serpentine belt is the green line that you wanna follow. So 
as I've noted earlier, there's very little room in here. So to get a little bit extra room to install the belt, you can unbolt this bolt here, which will free up the cooler for the supercharger. And then you can also unbolt these bolts right here, which will allow you to literally move this entire thing over to this side, giving you a ton of ton more room in this general area over here to install the belt. Don't worry, these caps are sealed, so the fluid will not leak out. See, I just removed this bottle, I moved it over. I haven't cracked the seal, it's still a completely sealed system. And now I have a whole bunch more room to get access to the pulleys in here. So if your hoses are dry and brittle, I would replace them before attempting this kind of a thing. You don't want to inadvertently crack one of these hoses and cause a leak. So make sure these are nice and pliable before attempting to move these bottles. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe.